Hello, are you going to load? Welcome back to another Stanley Parable episode. Uh, I don't know if it's going to load. Fucking do shit or this is gonna fucking load. It's like you gotta fucking do this in order to make it load. Fucking hit the Windows key to do it. Crows, crows, crows. Davy. Oh my fucking god, again? Again? I gotta do this shit again? Hang on. Fuck! It's 8.48. I don't know what the fuck the point of that is. Hang on, hang on. Before we get started, can I just say something? No, I can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Why? What was the point of that? What the hell was the point of that? Why even screwed with the fucking <laughs> The end is never the end. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Content? What does that mean? New content. Thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you 
you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. Jesus Christ, I feel After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Alright, let's go, boys. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Mostly tedious. It's as if them. Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. I am the one giving the content. I, I'm just the one experiencing it. Alright. Okay. Hey. Alright. Alright, let's see. It's. The jump circle? What? Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Good. Know, right? Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, exactly. I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. <laughs> That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? <laughs> this is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says... Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Vent. I want to show you something.
Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the Memory Zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Views of the Stanley Parable, like this stunning triumph of games journalism. Ten out of ten from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote: "Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created." Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk, Maho. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? The fucking steam review. 
reviews. Oh no, oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the yes, online Steam video is. game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? I mean, they were by regular people, so... Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. See what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You wouldn't tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley family. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second... Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole... Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? It's not unendurable by any means, but it's... Well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just... Wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? 
A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? I swear there was. Where did it go? Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. I'm asking you to work with me here. I, we need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. I'm, I'm going to step away for just a moment and I'm going to try to find us a door. Okay. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please do not press the skip button. Just wait here, wait here for me, and don't press the skip button. Got it? Yes, good. I'll be right back. Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking, and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because... Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've... They didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. Is never the end, 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 is never the end.
disturbing the shit out of me. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New, new content. See this shit, boys? Oh, good. You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of exactly. all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. The Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Yeah, Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented, it screams progress and innovation and long term franchising potential. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Here we are, 
Go on, try out some of the new features. Please, no screenshots. Here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever and... Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Oh, goodness, um, Stanley, this is fairly awkward. I hate to do this, but before you leave, you really should go to the bucket exhibit. You see, there's a surprise I was going to spring on you later and it involves the bucket. And I really do hate to break the illusion, but it's important that you go see the bucket, okay? okay All right, I'll get out of your hair now. Get a bucket. You know what, Stanley? I actually think the jump circle was a pretty good idea. I'd like to hang on to that for the sequel. Epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yes! You see! What a thrill! What a rush! That was you! The button described you! Do it again! Do it again! Jim. Ooh, it hits even harder the second time! If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. 
Jim. Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. Jim. Try Jim. putting the Jim bucket Jim. away. Jim. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose Jim. all sense of who you actually are. <laughs> I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable ah, too. Ah, ah. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Ah. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical. That it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well. I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more awaits you in the Stanley Parable too. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Sunday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? You know... Sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday it is. Yay! Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning Let's leap go, forward for video games as a medium. You see? Isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Great! Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Can I go back down? Okay, and I guess we're back in the hole now. Did you really need to see it again? I don't know what else there is to say, Stanley. It's an infinite hole. It's exactly what you're doing right now, but forever. There really are so many other fascinating exhibits that I've prepared for you. I really spent quite a lot of time on all this, and I would very much like to show you some more of them. How about we go ahead and press that teleport button again, so we can get back to what's really important about... Oh, goodness. Well, this is rather embarrassing, Stanley. I'll be honest with you, I truly did not believe that anyone would actually stay in the hole long enough to hit the bottom. Yes, I know, I told you the hole was infinite, but come on. 
who actually wants to fall forever. The hole was plenty deep. It was more than deep enough, in my opinion. Maybe it's you who likes falling too much. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe I am. <sighs> Maybe Look, you are. The things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top. Oh, for heaven. You see, <laughs> I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. <laughs> Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there, goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing with... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Okay. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not a How is this still appealing to you? It's funny. I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not nah, working? it's not eh? working. You sure? Yeah. Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. I'm trying. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the whole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. Yeah. 
my head stronger. Now you're no longer. But you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. I would have went for upside down Stanley. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's yeah. sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they wouldn't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, 
This is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley picked up the bucket. Let's try to escape the game again. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? it tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. To a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. You found one of them, one of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. Exactly. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you'll come across one of these beautiful figurines. Here. 
another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs. Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your Stan belt. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. Good. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 284. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except 
for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. And... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket. Go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out.